Hello and welcome to the first video for sections 4 and 5 in DMA 10. Um, just like uh, the last two sections, uh, your text breaks up multiplying and dividing integers into two different sections in the book, but for these lessons we're going to combine them into um, the same sections because the rules for multiplying and dividing uh, integers, as we'll see soon, are fairly similar. In this video we're going to cover the rules for multiplying and dividing integers. Um, we're going to talk about division when zero is involved, uh, and then we're going to do some practice with some small integers. In the next video, we're going to practice some more with some large numbers, and then look at some applications and word problems for multiplying and dividing integers. The rules for multiplying and dividing integers are pretty straightforward. First, we're just going to multiply or divide as usual, um, and then the next two rules kind of follow the double sign rules that you might remember from adding and subtracting integers. If the signs are the same, the answer is going to be positive. So for example, when we have a positive and a positive, we get a positive answer. If we have a negative and a negative, we have a positive answer. Or again, with division, negative and negative will give us a positive answer. So these rules hold for both multiplication and division. Okay. Now rule three, if the signs are different, the answer is going to be negative. Um, so if we have a positive and a negative, we get a negative. Or a negative and a positive, we get a negative. And the same holds for division as well. Um, a, a quick and easy way to remember this, if you're taking a quiz or on a test, if you want to jot these down to remember, is that uh, plus plus is positive, minus minus is positive, plus minus equals negative, or minus plus equals negative. So same, it's going to be a positive, uh, different, we're going to get a negative. Now let's talk about division with zero. We have two cases uh, of division by zero. The first is when zero is the divisor. So we have this example four divided by zero. And that's something that we can't do. We would say that that might be um, undefined. Or, in some texts, you might see the word impossible, because we can't divide by zero. But if zero is our dividend, if we have something like zero divided by four, that's okay. The answer is just zero itself. Um, and a good way to remember this is if we think of division um, as fractions, because we can do that too. A fraction is just a division problem. So we could rewrite four divided by zero as four divided by zero. And then we could write zero divided by four as uh, zero over four. Okay, And we can use a simple trick to help us remember these. The o's are going to be, uh, the zeros are going to be o's. Um, if we have four on top, reading top to bottom, and the zero on the bottom, that's an n-o. Um, we can't do that with zero on the bottom. But um, in the case where zero is on the top, that's o-k. Um, so N-O reading down, or O-K uh, reading down as well. That's a quick tip to help you remember when you can and can't use zero in a division problem. Let's look at some practice problems. Uh, these are all multiplication practice problems, and you'll see that we have multiplication written in uh, several different ways. Here in our first problem, we use um, the dot to represent multiplication. And uh, now that we're getting into some more algebraic uh, levels of math, we're not going to use the cross anymore. The cross gets really um, confusing when there are x's involved. Um, so we typically, in algebra, are going to use a dot to show multiplication. Okay? We can also show implied multiplication if we have a number outside parentheses. Okay? So we can kind of imagine a little dot in there that to show um, an Im implied multiplication right here. Or, in the case of our, our third example here, we have a th uh, parentheses right next to each other with nothing in between. That's also um, implied multiplication, so we can think of a time sign there and a time sign there. And um, when you're getting started, it's helpful to draw in these time signs um, uh, to show that implied multiplication so you can keep track of what we're doing. Now that we've talked about the different ways to represent uh, multiplication, let's talk about how we can... Um, uh, use it in practice. So this first example, we have negative 3 times 5. We're going to multiply those integers not like normal. 3 times 5 is 15. And now we place the sign. Um, the signs are different. Remember, the 5 is implied to be positive, And we've got a negative 3. 
So when the signs are different, we get a negative. Okay. Next we have negative 6 times 46. These signs are the same, so we're going to get a positive answer. Put a plus up here just to remind me that. And then uh, let's go ahead and multiply these. Uh, when we do vertical multiplication like this, I always put the longer number on the top and the shorter number on the bottom. Okay. We're going to multiply. We start in the ones place. 6 times 6 is going to be 36. So that's 6 carry the 3. And then we do the 6 times the 4. That's 24 plus the 3 that we carried is 27. So the answer to this is going to be positive 276. In our third example, we have um, th uh, three numbers that we're multiplying together. And just like when we were adding and subtracting multiple numbers in a row, we're going to work from left to right. So we're going to start with this negative 5 times negative 5. Okay. Negative 5 times negative 5, the signs are the same, so it's going to be a positive 25 times. We bring down that other negative 5 that we had, hadn't used before. Okay, and now we do a positive times a negative. Different signs is going to be negative. And then 25 times 5 is 125. Now let's look at some division examples. Again, we have uh, different ways of writing division. We can use this division sign right here, or uh, we can write a, a division problem as a fraction, as in the second two examples. So um, this is negative 20 divided by 5, negative 36 divided by 6, and so on. So let's get started with the first example, negative 20 divided by 5. The signs are different, so our answer is going to be negative. Okay, and then 20 divided by 5 is going to be 4. The second example, negative 36 divided by negative 6. The signs are the same, so we get a positive answer. And 36 divided by 6 is going to be 6. Okay. Last example, 264 divided by negative 12. Um, signs are different. We've got a positive and a negative. So we have a negative answer. I'm going to go ahead and write that negative sign in. Um, before we uh, complete this problem, but we're going to um, have to do a little bit of long division here um, in order to complete this problem. So remember, the number on top, or if we're using the first method, the number that's listed first is the number that's going to go inside in our long division. So 264, the first number or the top number, divided by 12. Okay. Now we can start dividing. We're going, trying to put 12 into this number over here. We start with a uh, first place in the left and see if 12 can go into that. Can 12 go into 2? No, it's too big. It's not going to go into 2. Um, so we have to move a digit over and look at 26. Is 12 going to go into 26? Yes, because 26 is indeed bigger than 12. It's going to go in there how many times? Um, 1, 2. Because 2 times 12 is 24. Um, we multiply those two numbers. Um, I multiplied 12 times 2 to get the 24 that I wrote down there. Um, and now we're going to subtract those. Okay, So 6 minus 4 will give us 2. And then 2 minus 2 is 0, so I don't have to write that 0 in. Uh, next, we're going to bring down the next digit value. Okay, So we're going to bring that 4 down. And now we've got 12 going into 24. We know from the last step that 12 is going to go into 24 twice. 12 times 2 is 24. And when we subtract those, we'll get 0. Um, just a heads up, in this section of DMA, you will very rarely, if ever, um, ever have a remainder to worry about when you're doing division. You should always get whole number answers. We won't be doing work with remainders until we get into DMA 20, if you need to take that class. So um, for the most part, with very few exceptions, you should always have a remainder of zero. So um, to sum that all up, we did our long division. Remember, place a sign with that answer. Our answer is going to be negative 22. Let's review what we covered in this video. First, we started with the rules for multiplying and dividing integers. We multiply or divide like normal, and then we place the sign. Same signs positive, different signs negative. We talked about division with zero. It's okay to, we can't divide by zero, but we can divide zero by another number and get the answer zero. And then we did uh, some practice with some small integers. 
Next, um, in part two of sections four and five, we'll practice with some larger numbers, and then we're going to look at some applications and word problems.